Hi everybody, this is Granny. Today we're going to a little town on the other side of the tracks. I mean, literally, on the other side of the tracks. If you're driving on State Highway 507 between Tenino and Centralia, at about the midway point, you'll notice a sign indicating the town of Bukota. Today we're going to cross the tracks and take a closer look at this historic town. Although the town is small today, the population is about 600, at one time it was the largest settlement in Thurston County. Yukota was first settled by Aaron Webster in 1854. Aaron opened a sawmill there, which he lo later sold to Oliver Sheep, and Oliver gave the town the unsettling name of Seatco. I discovered through research that the Native Americans had a legend about a wild, hairy beast that was seven feet tall and had magical powers that roamed the woods, and they called them Seatco but even to utter the name was thought to bring misfortune. At this time, Washington had not become a state and was still a territory, and the territory lacked a prison. In 1878, the Washington Territorial Legislature authorized a six-year contract with Thurston County Sheriff William Billings to build a first territorial prison in Seatco which he did in partnership with some other investors. By the year 1879, the prison had 30 inmates. Part of the contract required that the owners of the prison would be paid 70 cents a day for each inmate, but they must feed, clothe, and employ them in a suitable work. Also, they would be required to care for their medical needs and recapture any who might escape. In return, they would be compensated with any wages the men earned with their labors, which gave the owners incentive to keep the men working 9 to 12 hours a day, mainly at their own companies. Seatco Prison remained open until 1887, when it was replaced with the Washington State Penitentiary at Walla Walla, and the remaining prisoners were transferred there. Soon after, the town's name was changed to Bucota, using the first two initials of the town's three main investors. In 1907, the Seatco prison burned down, and that was the end of the place known as a hell on earth by some of its inmates. Today, the uh, site of the prison is a park and there's a stone marker on the site. Once a year in the fall, the town honors its infamous past and holds a popular haunted house event at the old school gym. Dubbed as Scary Nights, the town adopts the name Bukota and welcomes Halloween fans to be scared out of their wits. Other points of interest in the town include the old town hall. On the day we visited there, I was fortunate enough to get a personal tour by the Mayor Pro Tem, Steve Purcell. Oh, this is pretty nice. Yeah, this is, uh, it's all been uh, redone, of course, at uh, one point, and I can't recall the year. Uh, There's only one room in this building that was usable. Mm -hmm. That was the north room downstairs, and even it was leaking. The yeah, Astrologers didn't have the money to repair it, and so they sold it to the town for like $10,000. <laughs> but they could Built still... in the 1920s, the building nearly fell into ruin until a generous donation by a local citizen allowed the building to be brought back to a usable condition. I was able to tour the upper floor of the old building, where today highly, highly polished original wood floors and other fixtures displayed the civic pride of this community. On the outside of the building, we noted the original windows and the doors and the old style concrete work where old logging chains and logging cables had been used for reinforcement and concrete.
Across the street from the city hall stands Joe's Place, a 113-year-old family-owned and run business that's still a popular gathering spot for town residents of Bakota and other nearby towns. A short distance down the street is the Liberty, the only grocery store in town, and next door to that, the post office. I was able to visit two of their parks. One was the site of the prison, where there was also a billboard telling me that it was also the location of the Mutual Lumber Company, one of several enterprises that employed the residents of Bukota and the surrounding towns. The mill once employed 300 people. Bukota was also had a, a coal mine, a sash and blind factory, and a brick making plant. During the 1920s, the town was so productive that it was billed as a town with a million dollar payroll. We drove over to Volunteer Park and observed fishermen fishing in the Skookumchuck River that borders the park. The park is also uh, a place to uh, make reservations to host large gatherings and it has RV sites with hookups and a dump station. And the rates are very reasonable. The town itself is a mixture of new and old ar architecture interspersed with some older manufactured homes. But in the far end of town, is a very nice complex of newer 90s style homes. We found the town to be a quiet and welcoming place and we'll go back again to visit. I'd like to thank Steve and the very nice woman who answered my questions at City Hall and uh, tell everybody that we had an interesting time at Bukota and I'd like to thank you all for exploring Bukota with me. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.